welcome to Karma Cruising. I'm Scott. I'm Helen. And I'm TJ. And uh, on the back there with TJ is Cocker Spaniel Flash, enjoying the sunshine. So here we are on a, a lovely Saturday morning, sun shining, canopies down. And we, uh, we've just left Marple where we went to last night. So we're just heading back along the upper peak forest canal, heading towards Disley, heading way back to Furnace Vale. And we're going to be looking for a nice little spot to mow. Because we've got a little job to do on Karma today. We've been waiting for the weather to be nice. And it's one of them jobs that you don't really want to do. Um, I don't know if you remember when we went back to uh, North Cheshire and we took the boat back out of the water and we did a load of jobs to it. One of the things we did was we polished uh, the bottom part of the boat. So all of the, the plastic that's gone a bit dull and a bit faded, we used a buffing machine to do the bottom part while it was out of the water. And then obviously we anti-fouled it and a few other bits painted the wood on the outside, etc., etc. So the idea today is we've got the buffing machine with us, we've got the generator with us. So we're gonna try and uh, find a nice little uh, quiet spot so we're not gonna disturb anybody. And we're gonna polish the top end of the boat. So we'll uh, we'll do a bit of a vlog on that when we when we start to do that. But uh, just want to mention as well, we stayed at Marple last night, and uh, I did see something on one of the groups, but didn't really read it. But it looks like uh, all of the uh, the service points, uh, the boaters facilities at Marple uh, are not going to be there for much longer. It looks like the land's been acquired by somebody else. I don't know if they've sold it or not. There was a few people moored up using the water tap yesterday, but there's no bins there and there's no physical way of getting into the toilets or the Elson unless you're actually moored on the uh, on the side. But there's fences up and barrier tape. So I don't really know what's going to happen there. But if that goes, that's, uh, that's a long way between facilities, that. But uh, hopefully the Canal and River Trust will have something in the pipeline for it. So yeah, we just want to find somewhere where the sun's going to be shining and also somewhere we can uh, be a bit on our own if you like so we're not going to be disturbing people because we're going to need to run the generator to run the machine uh, which will take a few hours of running so just try and be kind to the quarters and try and find somewhere on our own. We've also, while we were at Marple, we've, uh, we've nipped to the shop, we've nipped to the butchers this morning. So with the weather being nice, uh, after we finish pol polishing the boat, buffing it up, we'll, uh, we'll have a barbecue and a couple of beers, I think, tonight. That's all right with all you? Yeah. Mind yeah. you, are you having a beer, TJ? No. No? No. Flash having a burger. I don't think he wants a burger. Flash is the burger thief. Don't we? Aye, people won't know about that though. No. People won't know about the burger thief. We were away in the caravan having a barbecue when I nipped outside the caravan and came back and there was a burger missing. Mm. You'll also will have come to his people there when he said we were away in the caravan. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, we now, <laughs> we now yeah, don't have our motorhome anymore. We've swapped that for a caravan. So, yeah, we, All uh, change. After we moored the boat up uh, for winter, we uh, we went to purchase a new motorhome. We put a deposit on a new motorhome and traded the old one in. And then we went again and all changed. We didn't come away with a, a brand new motorhome. We've come away with a brand new twin axle caravan. So we've gone back in time to when we very first started. You know, with leisure units, we had a caravan first, then we bought a bigger caravan, then we went to a water home, then we bought a boat, and now we're back to a do. caravan. So yeah, always something to do on a weekend with our mm -hmm. family. Have we got karma coming through the bridge, swing bridge? 
if I sound out of breath, of course, I would just start to run along the towpath and then manually wind the bridge up. Hello. <laughs> So here's the swing bridge here. We've got to wind it all up manually with the windlass. Scott's just going to pull in over there. Just wind the bridge down now. Here we have Karma, Scott, Karma, and TJ are on board uh, coming through the lift bridge. So this is the manual lift bridge, operate it with a key. So me and Flash have jumped off. Coming through this. It's a lot easier when you don't have the canopy, you don't have to watch out for your height to make sure you're not catching your canopy on the bridges. So there we go, through that one. So this is the swing bridge. I've opened this, ready for Scott to come through. This is the last of the bridges we need to do today. So we managed to get uh, moored here in this nice little, little spot. I'm not going to really disturb anybody. There's a little bit of a wood around the corner. I don't know if you can hear in the background, we've got the generator running. So we have a uh, Honda generator that sometimes we use if the solar panel is uh, not going to get any sun and we need to top the batteries up. But for today, it's so we can use my polishing machine, so buffing machine, there's pads on and everything. Uh, it is always good practice, just to let you know, to unravel all of your leads, especially if you're going to be charging. So we've, as well as using the buffing machine, I've obviously put the, the lead in. Uh, so we're actually topping the batteries up as we go as well, so we've got everything charging inside. But the reason you unravel it all is it, it, it can it, it can sort of, you know, become like coiled up and then you see them uh, and it, it burns um, and it melts um, and it can cause a fire. So it's always a, a good idea with any any electrical stuff. Make sure it's not 100% ravelled up, just leave it, you know, uncoiled so it's not coiled round itself over and over. Obviously as well, got to be careful because what's next to us is water. So we just got to make sure that nothing goes into the water to do it. So what we're going to do today is, as you can see, if Helen zoomed in after all the fenders off and everything, we're going to do one side at a time. But as you can see, there's like marks. The boat is, you know, what is it, 30 year old? 32. 32 years old. So obviously things have gone wrong and it marks just, just, just age. Now what this is, it's, it's what they call oxidisation. So it, what has happened here where everything's gone dull is just obviously where the sun over the years has basically baked it. So it's made the top layer die basically, dead, pe dead paint if yeah, you like. it's gone like a creamy. If you ever see a pink car that was red, or should I say a red car that's gone pink, that's exactly what happened, it's called oxidisation. So all we've got here is, a buff machine with a pad on and then I've got some G3 compound so this is just a cut and shine uh, polish if you like compound um, if you're doing it on the car you would polish it with the compound and then you would polish it buff and shine with, 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 with another you know car polish or something but with this I'm just literally gonna compound it and, and get rid of the compound and it'll bring it back and it'll get rid of some of the marks that will just not disappear and um, it's not the cleanest of jobs as you'll see shortly the secret for it or what you should be doing is you've got plenty of water you just wet the area that you're gonna you're gonna do and another secret is do it in small stages so literally get some of your compound make sure it's I'll put quite a bit on there and that's because the pad is brand new so literally all we want to do on there is start with a slow setting as well so it doesn't squirt everywhere so just get that into the pad maybe speed it up a little bit 
But like I say, it's not the cleanest of jobs, it will squirt everywhere at you. So what it has in here, it has like a cutting cutting agent in the, in the compound. So this will start cutting in. And like I say, I'm just, uh, just getting the pad soaked up and getting the pad work at the minute. If you've never done it before, I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise you to go straight onto a car and do this because you can actually uh, you can actually take the paint off cars if you if, if well if you don't do it correctly. But now that the pad's got a bit on, I might just put a little bit more on that pad. So it's in there. Just work it in. As you can see, it squirts off. So you can just start to speed it up. What we're hoping is we're just going to take small layer of dead paint off. And then what we will do is we'll obviously wipe that off. As you can see, there's bits of muck in there where it's coming through. And you're covered in wet Well, flash. This, is, this is what happens, you know. <laughs> I said it. I said from the start, it's yeah. not a, it's not the cleanest of jobs. But the good thing is, there's lots of water. We can just brush it all down, and then Helen will go around with the, uh, with the cloth and do all the cleaning up, won't you? Yeah. There you go. Thanks. Well volunteered. Cheers. Well, yeah, we'll uh, we'll do a bit, and then we'll show you what it's like when we've got all the marks gone. All right. Three hours later, since the last time we're on. <laughs> so we're just about there now, as you can see. Lovely shine on the, the body work now. Helen's followed me around and uh, look with all the woodwork. We're just going to spin the boat back round again now, because obviously we handballed it round. And we're just going to tidy up the, the metal work on the other side, but yeah. The bar opened early today. I was uh, gagging for a bit. I'll be here on the other side in this lovely weather. And just do a bit of a close-up so you can see the shine. All nice and sparkly. So, about three and a half, nearly four hours later, we have a very shiny boat, now pointed in the right direction again. Canopy's back up on it. Uh, Magnus is there, sponsored by Magnus, deserves that. So nice and shiny, all clean, no marks, but obviously I couldn't do the back, so I just thought, there, Helen will show you. This is what we mean about oxygenization. It's a good example. You can see at the top there where the canopies kept it yeah, without the sun, yeah. and then the bottom so bit, and then that's what I've used to buff. And that's when, when you go around this corner, you don't see any of that because it's all nice and clean now. But obviously, I couldn't stand on the water and buff it. So we might do that with a bit of hand polish. Uh, well, hand polish it, I mean. And then when we've got, we might be able to do it at, at the marina at Furnace Vale. We might be able to, um, to do it there. But yeah, good day all round. Yeah. <laughs> I just look like, I don't know. Somebody spray painted me. But yeah, it's a lovely spot here. Nice white house. I was talking to the uh, the owner there. He's building some sort of fence to go around the back end of his uh, garage there. Nice guy, was chatting. He's asking loads of questions about the boat. So as many people as we've uh, been walking down the tow path. I think that's what took it so long really, is we had to keep stopping and talking to everybody. But yeah, good day all round. TJ, thanks for all your help. Sat at the front there, where he always is. Three guesses what he's doing. Yeah. Right, we're gonna have a chill out. I need a shower. And then we're gonna have a barbecue, I think, for tea. Well, we are having a barbecue. We are having a barbecue for tea. Ah. Just thought we'd give you little trees as we've just seen here. The coal board from Bollington. I think it's called uh, Alton. We're just going past. As you can see there, we've got 
136. Yeah. Cobalt Alton. List of the prices there on the side. Plenty of stock on board. We've got our barbecue on. We're uh, about ready for meat on there, I think. We've got our meat from Butchers in Marple. Been there many times, it's good. Yeah. Nice camera, all looking very polished and nice. Even at the back there, Helen managed to uh, do it by hand and clean up that back end there, which is good. Yeah, we've had a good day. Nice little spot here, just as you come from the swing bridge at Disley towards Furnace Vale. Anyway, beer o'clock, food o'clock, we'll catch you again. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again. Bye, you bye.